What's going on everyone? This is Joe with Ultradyne USA. Here at Ultradyne, we are always wanting to push the limits in high performance shooting. We recently released a short video of hitting 1,100 yards with iron sights. Hitting 1,100 yards consistently is a big enough challenge on its own, but to do it with iron sights is a whole different beast that we wanted to conquer. In this video, I'll go into more detail about what all we had to do in order to accomplish this feat. From the gear we used, to the ballistics that needed to be calculated, to the environmental factors, and everything in between. So let's get to it. Our experiment began by first determining just what setup we are going to use. We knew that for our sight system, we are going to be using our C4 iron sights. So our C4 sights use our dual aperture system. What this means is that, is that is instead of just one peep sight in the rear and a blade in the front, there's actually another aperture in the front sight that has a second peep sight. So what this technology does is it allows the user to actually see what they're aiming at instead of covering up the target like you would have to do with a blade. So this dual aperture system allows your brain to center on the target on its own by centering a circle inside of another circle. This minimizes the possibility for parallax error. There are different sized apertures that can be placed in both the front and the rear sight, but for this experiment, we decided to go with the smallest diameter options so that our aim point was as precise as possible. Another great advantage of using the C4 sights for this experiment is that they're fully adjustable for both wind and elevation. So we can easily adjust them to our specific needs during this experiment. So once we knew that we were going to be using our C4 sights, we knew that we would need to use an AR platform to be compatible with the sights. So for our AR, we decided to use an AR-10 chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. We would be using a complete CMMG upper and lower, and then a 22 inch heavy fluted barrel with a one and eight inch twist rate. So for our ammunition, we decided to use Hornady Match 120 grain ELD. We chose this ammunition for its ballistic coefficient as well as its weight and velocity. So this ammo had a ballistic coefficient of 0.245 and a velocity out of the barrel at a little over 2,900 feet per second. So it's very crucial to know all of this information because these are the key factors that are going to play a role whenever we go to zero our rifle and find the ballistics for our further shots. Once we had our setup all figured out, it was time for us to figure out just what our bullet was going to do at 1,100 yards. So using all of the numbers that I previously stated, the barrel length, the bullet weight, ballistic coefficient, bullet speed, etc. I was able to insert them into a ballistics calculator to help me with my calculations. So I used the Chairgun Elite Plus app, and this app allowed me to insert every little detail that I needed to determine my bullet drop. It also takes into consideration the height from bore, the elevation, the temperature, humidity, air pressure, basically everything you need in order to give you a proper ballistic measurement. So the first question that probably comes to mind when thinking a bullet drop is just how high do you have to aim at 1100 yards in order for your bullet to end up on target? Well, for this specific test, we knew that we are going to be sighting in our rifle at 50 yards. So if I plugged into my ballistics app that my zero was 50 yards, then plugged in that I was going to be shooting at a target 1100 yards away, the app told me that there would be 411 inches of drop or a little over 34 feet. So if we wanted to approach this with the technical way, visualize what was happening. If you drew an imaginary line running down my barrel and followed it all the way to 1100 yards, then the point on that line that is at 1100 yards would be 411 inches above the target. So technically, you could determine a point at 1100 yards that is exactly at that 411 inch high mark above the target and aim right at it with your iron sights and hope for impact but that isn't quite as feasible as the approach that we took. Instead, we wanted to determine how I needed to adjust my sights in order to aim directly at the target at 1100 yards and hit where I was aiming at. So if you think of the barrel and the sight line starting as parallel lines, the barrel is obviously going to need to be tilted up in order to be pointing at that 411 inch mark above the target. 
So say that the angle of the barrel changes from here to here, just a slight change. Once the barrel is pointing where we needed it to be, now how do we need to adjust the sights in order to be aiming directly at the target? So the C4 sights already come with an adjustability system that allows you to raise and lower the post on the front sight, as well as raise the rear sight for elevation. So the sights can already get us part of the way there just by bottoming out the front, uh, the front sight post and raising the adjustment on the rear sight. But to get us the rest of the adjustment, we just simply installed a rear sight riser to get our rear sight elevated further off bore. Once we are set up to where we knew we would have the adjustability to aim at 1100 yards, we still needed to know how to sight in our rifle at 50 yards. So all we did was we went back into our ballistics app and we changed our zero distance to 1100 yards and then put our target distance at 50 yards. So this gave us a number of 17 and three quarter inches high at 50 yards. If we wanted to visualize what we are doing, say we are at point A. The target at 1100 yards is at point B. So we would want a straight line from point A to point B representing our sight line if we are aiming directly at the target. So if we drew a straight line down our bore to that 411 inches high point at 1100 yards, that point would act as point C. So we now have a triangle and can turn this into a geometry problem. So using the angle of the barrel from the ground and a distance of 50 yards from the end of the barrel to the target down our sight line, all we have to do is measure the distance from the points where the sight line and the bullet line intersect that 50 yard mark. And that would give you your 17 and three quarter inches high measurement. So that would be the technical way of doing it, but it is much easier to just plug it into your ballistics app and let it tell you the distance for you. Once we knew how high we needed to be at 50 yards, I set up my target. Instead of having just one target with a bullseye and trying to hit that bullseye, I actually set up two targets. So the bullseye of the target on bottom is what I was aiming at with my sights. And the bullseye of the target on top was set to be exactly 17 and three quarter inches high than the bullseye on bottom. So I did the best I could bore sighting it on top of my launch pad with the bore pointing at the bullseye on top and the sights pointing at the bullseye on the lower target. And I began shooting. I knew that the front sight aperture moves 0.25 MOA with every rotation. And if I adjusted the rear sight for elevation, that every click would be 1.125 MOA. So after several shots, I was able to adjust my sights to have three consistent impacts at the elevation I needed to be. Now that I had my zero, it was then time to try it out at 1100 yards. The target that we had set up downrange was 30 inches in diameter. So it's about 2.7 MOA at 1100 yards. With the naked eye, you can see the target, but it's not very crisp. So you can mostly just kind of see the white paint and not really the actual outline of the circle target. However, once you look through the dual aperture of the C4 sights, it becomes much clearer and I can pick out the target much easier. The dual aperture technology minimizes parallax error and it also allows the human eye to easily focus on what is being shown through the front aperture. This not only allows your brain to automatically center whatever object is in that front circle, but it also concentrates all of the light being shown through the apertures directly into the sweet spot of your eye in order to display what is being shown more clearly. There have actually been papers written over this topic and I link those below in the description of the video. So if you're more interested and want to learn more, check that out. Once I acquired the target, I knew it then just relied on the fact of finding exactly where to hold to be as consistent as possible. I knew it would probably take multiple attempts to find exactly where to hold on the target, especially since I had only zeroed at 50 yards and I didn't take any further shots to confirm. We only had a one to two mile per hour wind that day, so I knew it wouldn't be much of a factor at all. So I just aimed to center a mass by center, centering the circle target inside of this circle aperture on the front. My first shot was about a foot low, so I knew immediately I was in the ballpark. All my calculations got me close. Now it was just the fact of finding exactly where to hold. It took me a few more shots before finally I was able to make my first impact. Once that first impact was made, I knew exactly where to hold on the target inside of my front aperture. And I was actually able to go on and make three impacts out of five shots. That's, that success rate is challenging enough having a high magnification scope on top of an AR platform shooting factory ammunition but to do it with iron sights was a pretty incredible feat. We had faith that we would be able to do it with the C4 sight system technology, but three impacts out of five shots was an even better result than we were expecting. 
So what were the main takeaways that made this possible? The main factor was the dual aperture technology. I'm not saying it would be impossible to be that consistent with a blade in the front, it would be much, much harder than having that second aperture to look through and center the target to minimize parallax hair. The adjustability was another major factor. Being able to easily adjust that front sight in order to get the proper elevation that I needed, and no wind was a huge factor as well. If there was a 10 mile an hour wind, I'm not sure if I'd be able to be as precise with my holds as I was, just being able to hold center a mass. The final thing was having my stable rest. So with this system from Ultradyne, it is as stable as it gets. The ball head allows you to tighten it down exactly to the desired resistance to where you will still have the adjustability while remaining completely stable. You can then support the buttstock up against your shoulder with your hand or a rear bag and you're as steady as you can be. You can then add weight to the launch pad to take recoil and muzzle jump almost completely out of the equation so you're able to have a nice smooth trigger pull. So there you have it, that is a full story on how we were able to have success shooting 1,100 yards with iron sights. If you like this content and you want to see more of it, please let us know. We love to hear feedback from our viewers. We are going to be working on a lot more content like this in the future, and we are always working on new innovative products to share with you guys. So to stay up to date, make sure to follow us on all our social media, subscribe to our YouTube, we are also now on Rumble. And feel free to check out our website at ultradineusa.com to view our full line of products. So thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you all on the next one.